This is Anomalies, the generative art game. Today I'm going to be describing and discussing the options menu. First, just want to go over some basics. Screen resolution is handled here. You can go full screen by clicking this or windowed over here and then you would hit apply and it would change that. Just make sure the resolution you check is actually supported by your monitor, otherwise it might cause an error. Max segments. This affects what happens in the game when I hit randomize. Randomize will change all of these parameters randomly and then create a new anomaly based on those new parameters. Hit escape, go back to the options menu. Max segments will just limit the number of segments that will form randomly. Right? So if I set it down here, it will never form more than 95 segments. Uh, if I go up to 1,000, then it can go anywhere from, like, you know, 1 to 1,000. Um, but if you're in the main uh, game screen here, and you're randomly creating anomalies like this, right? So this one has 560 segments. But if I wanted to see the same anomaly here, I'm going to move closer to it, right? With more segments, I can manually go up to a thousand here, hit respawn, and you'll see it with more segments, right? It's a bigger version of the same anomaly. So what this max segments does is just limit what will happen randomly. It doesn't limit what you can do manually. Anyway, moving on. Same idea for max particles. It will not randomly create more than 15 particle sets. Max spawns. Spawns are sort of the starting points for each of these long branches here. And those can actually branch off into more branches, right? But each one has a spawn point. And you can see this had uh, 23 spawn points. So there should be 23 of these long branches. Um, where was I? So max spawns will limit the number of these initial spawn areas. Nebula alpha. You see these blue things? These are called nebulas. The pink and the blue. Alpha is how transparent or non-transparent it is. So if I bring this down to 50... 50 is actually hard to get to. And I go back and I respawn the same anomaly. Okay, what's happening here... It's a little hard to tell because I have the bloom shader active and have the outline shader active and those kind of they muck about with what you're seeing visually on the screen all right so I'm gonna go try it again but without those shaders and this is kind of what the game looks like without the shading effects and here if I zoom in closer these nebulas are here but they're pretty transparent Right, you can see through them. That's basically all this Nebula Alpha does. If I go up to 100, go back to the game and respawn the same thing. Oh, somehow symmetry was activated. I didn't do that on purpose. That's okay. I can't see through them as much. They're pretty opaque, right? That's the Alpha. Alpha is transparency. Okay. So we've covered this section. Real-time shadows, if I, and shadow alpha, right? This will create shadows in the game. And it will set the alpha, just like the transparency, for those shadows. And this basically locks that parameter. 
these are all locked by default here because this is something you wouldn't want changing necessarily from one anomaly to another but you can unlock them and then this would be randomized whenever you create a new anomaly when you when you randomize so but normally I have this set to locked so these are sort of settings right I don't consider these parameters of an anomaly it's more settings for the game but just to make things interesting I allowed the option to unlock these so they would be randomized each time you click randomize and that you might like that you might not it's up to you but by default I, I didn't think that would be something people would want to alter each time they click randomize so I set them as locked by default let's see what shadows does I'm going to respawn this same anomaly with shadows and it doesn't look much different does it uh, that reason for that is oops, shadow alpha is at 50 so I'm going to bring it back to 100 go back to creative mode respawn again now we can see that these shadows are much darker you can see the shadow right there it's quite dark it's pretty much just solid black there and you can see that these anomalies are lit up on this side and dark on the other side and you know this is more fun to do when things are moving around so I'm gonna turn off symmetry I'm gonna reduce the number of segments here I'm gonna hit wiggle set it to so now we have a moving anomaly oh, we have straight branches straight branches are kind of boring let's try that without straight branches here we go now we have a bendy wiggly sort of anomaly and you can see the shadows being cast and being received by these other by, by the segments right now I really I don't like the default look of this game as much as I like it with the outline shader and the bloom this brightens things up makes it a little more contrasty and this will add that sort of cartoony effect and I'm going out of order here but what the heck it's just a game right <laughs> so I'm gonna respawn and now you can see this more cartoony outliney looking thing and the shadows are still there because I have those still active uh, let's go through the last few options here I'm gonna turn off the outline just so you can see the other effects as they exist alone so this is just with the bloom shader so it looks like that original version but everything's a bit brighter more vivid right the shadows are still there I'm gonna I'm going to set the alpha to like 80. It's hard to see because the anomaly is behind it. Okay, and then we're going to try the blur shader too. And you can set the amounts here. And as I said, you can unlock this. And that will be randomized the next time you click randomize. But let's see this same anomaly with blur. And the shadow alpha turned down just a slight amount. Okay, see now it's all. Oh. Okay, symmetry got set to two again. That's kind of happening. I'm not sure why that's happening. It must be some kind of malfunction. Okay, so here we have the anomaly with bloom, shadows, and blur activated. So it's a little fuzzy around the edges and you know that's blur for you it makes things fuzzy I'm gonna crank up the blur amount to five ah that's where it's happening huh. that's a what I would call a flaw in my user interface so when I click on creative sometimes it's clicking yeah if I hit creative down here it's automatically messing up the symmetry 
so I have to remember click creative up at the top. I'll have to fix that in a next in the next version of the game. Anyway, let's see something really blurry now. Oh yeah. You can barely make out the edges there. Very fuzzy sort of anomaly. Right. I can move around it. It's dancing around in space. Alright, so we've got the blur, we've got the bloom. Pixel graphics. These are fun. I'm make them really big. Let's make them six. So when I go back and I respawn this thing, not only will it have shadows and the bloom, you know, highlights, and the blurry edges, but it also got pixelized. So you can see, and I made them pretty big so it's very obvious. So, you know, some people like that retro sort of pixely look in their games, and you have that option here. Some people don't. So I have it set off by default, but uh, it's there if you want it. By the way, when I'm in creative mode, uh, I can move the mouse around, right, to mess with this menu. When I hit the space bar, that menu disappears, and I move the camera. And I'm using W, A, S, D. W means forward, S is backwards, A is left, and D is right. And I use the shift key. Hold it, holding that down makes things move faster. So that is all actually mentioned here at the bottom. And this basically gives you the instructions on how to use the game. Anyway. Hitting escape brings me back to the main menu, and I can access the options. Alright, we were discussing... Oh, interesting. This one's got some flowers and some particles. Altogether, somewhat similar to the last one, but more weird. Going back to the options menu, we're going to look at the final shader here, the outline shader. I'm going to go down to like 50-something. You can, again, you can set it as high or low as you want. And I'm going to hit respawn. And what's happening here now, the outline shader is interacting with the pixel shader. So that's why you're getting those outlining kind of squares on the edges of things, which I think is kind of neat. I'm going to turn away from the anomaly for a moment. That allows you to have a dark background once you see what's in the menus. We are looking at the options menu. I'm going to turn off the pixel graphics. I'm going to deactivate the blur shader and deactivate the pixel shader because I like them, but I feel like the game looks its best without them. That's just me. Okay, so here we have. Yeah, this is how I like it. It's got cartoony outline thing going. It's got the bright colors happening. And you can just sort of explore these things and wander through them and wonder what they mean. 